are so very thankful for an amazing church in California that has come alongside of us to offer a worship experience every week since, I guess, April, March or April, online. It is our daughter's church called The Bridge in California. And so the worship is about to start, but do you want to say anything about The Bridge worship? I'm telling you, anointing of God. That's what you want on a worship set. You want when singers sing that you sit there and say, wow, they are not only gifted, but they are anointed. So worship with them today. Sing the songs. The words will be there on the screen. And let your heart reach out and say, God, you are amazing. Enjoy this worship. And I want to just say about the Bridge team that I know their stories. And we haven't gotten to know them very well. But I look forward to a day when maybe they'll come to Rome and we'll get to meet them. But do you know there are people on the worship team who lost their mother in the last couple years? There are people who lost their marriage and God restored them and restored ministry. There are people who were prodigals and God brought them back. There are people who have been lovers of Jesus and have stayed faithful through thick and thin. So when you worship right now, I want you to say, Lord, it's not about the person. It's about the power of God that is coming forth out of their worship. That same power is for you and I. So let's stand, let's lift our hands, and let's worship Hallelujah. together. Christmas Sunday, and we are so excited that you've joined us. We invite you to stand to your feet as we worship and celebrate the birth of our Christ.
ones to adore and lift up and praise the name above all names, the one who is worthy of all of the praise and all of the glory. Will you join me in worshiping him this morning? We worship you, Lord. We worship you.
was amazing worship. Amazing. It was like being with my daughter right there, uh, worshiping. That's so very special from California to Rome, Italy. So we thank the bridge again for that amazing worship. And this is just a quick little announcement because we're going to tag team preach today. But next Sunday, January 3rd, the first Sunday of 2021. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. We're going to have communion together so you can get your elements ready for January 3rd. But there is something that's going to be revealed next week. And you don't want to miss that. What is it? Because God has given us a word for 2021 that you have got to believe it is absolutely from God and it's for you. Yes. So you don't want to miss January 3rd. And we're so glad that you're joining us this morning. So God always has a word for us. And we believe today he's going to remind and refresh us to finish strong and then to anticipate great and powerful things ahead. Let's listen to the message. It's December 27th. I can't believe it. It's 2020, but it's almost 2021. And you are going to speak today about something incredible. And so are you. And you're going to join us. And so welcome to December 27th, ICF Rome online service. I hope that you open your heart, lift up your praises, and enjoy this time of refreshing together. Good morning, church. It's so glad to see you online. You know, I can't see you but I know you're there. Today, we've got a word for you that I believe as we wrap up 2020 that God has specifically given to Pastor Jen and I to give you this day. Our theme for this year has been Faith Moves. And our theme verse was from Matthew chapter 17, verse number 20. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. That's a powerful portion of Scripture. And as we recap this year as your pastors, it's a position that I believe we have to look at a number of areas. One thing for sure, we have to look at how resilient the church was this past year. With a COVID-19 pandemic consuming our time and energy and really our lives for an entire year. I know for a fact that God has been with us this entire year. See, these are the things I know. We know that families have lost loved ones, and we know that the Holy Spirit is comforting them and will continue to comfort them. We know that the church was shut down here in Rome for a number of months as far as us getting to meet together and come together, which hindered a number of our normal scheduled events, retreats, camps, teams from America, our interns. The activities of our church were shut down from being together, but the church continued to grow. We went to online ministries in all areas and watched creatively as leaders of ministries kept teaching and helping people to grow. We had children and youth and young adult activities and classes they were online. We had prayer teams get bigger and schedules were increased. Our adult classes got larger as new people wanted to grow and get involved here at ICF. As you look back with me this year, the final message of a year from a pastor's perspective is us to look back, to anticipate what God has about to do in each of our lives? What did he work on? What areas did he change? How did he develop certain things in our lives? We would have never dreamed that we would be an online church, totally. But God had prepared us in the years prior to that. And some equipment was purchased and 
kids and young adults were trained on how to, how to work in this area of ministry. And, and here we are in the middle of a pandemic, and we have to use all the resources that we could possibly get in order to make something new happen. But I can tell you, God was for us. And you say, how did that happen? I'm not sure, but all I know is that our Wednesday night prayer meeting online went to about normally a thousand people partnering with us in prayer every Wednesday night. That's an incredible that people would just stop what they're doing from around the world and pray with us. We called it the hour of power where God did some miraculous things. Then our Sunday services online got bigger and bigger. To some weeks, there were over 50,000 people watching us being a part of our services. Various music and children and youth ministries from around the world started partnering with us online to give us worship experiences and, and, and times of ministry in those areas. People started giving online, and our expenses of our church continued to be met in the middle of a pandemic. Wow. Our leaders reached out in personal contacts to care for people. The church was full, in full operation, even though we were separated. Our team members, some of which went back to their countries, but continued to serve especially in the media ministry. The enemy may have thought we were quarantined and we couldn't continue, but the Holy Spirit kept providing means for us to get the word out. The church online began to grow and people were being saved and healed and, and miracles began to happen and the church and they were being developed. And now... As we look back, we have regular attenders from all over the world as a part of our online campuses. Isn't God amazing? When in the fall we were able to finally get back together here in Rome with some very strict rules and guidelines, we added another service and our numbers began to get bigger and bigger each week as this fall season grew and we got used to being social distanced and masked and all the things that we had to abide by and, and, the, and the temperature checks and the hand washing and all the things in church that we had to do, which we did so that we could keep getting the word out. It was amazing how people began to use their time and talents and service unto the Lord in the midst of this, people began to jump in and became faithful to serve in areas we would have we had to create because of the pandemic. Wow. Through this journey, I've learned a lot of things. And some I've had to relearn some things. I know for a fact that God is building his church. And he will bring you the people, and the resources that are needed to accomplish the task. It's his church. I never knew that when Jennifer and I began writing in August of 2019, the theme, Faith Moves. I would have never believed that 2020 would have had a COVID pandemic. Something that affected the entire world. And that our church would have to be somewhat recreated. But God knew and he prepared us. As your pastor, I want to personally thank all of our leaders and our workers who sacrificially gave and served this past year. The fruit of your labor has been noticed by God. And I believe is being rewarded and will continue to be blessed. This year, we have also had some of our people transfer out of Rome to their countries. And we pray that God will continue to bless them wherever they are. 2020 has been an unprecedented year. A year of change. A year of adaptation. 
a year of difficulties. But I believe that the mountains are being moved. And when God gave us that theme for 2020, and I knew that there was no pandemic when we were writing this in August, God knew that our people would have to understand that mountains, in other words, pandemics, COVID-19, isolation, quarantine, can be moved when God comes on the scene because people had faith to believe. I had faith to believe as a pastor that our church would continue to grow and develop. I never knew that people from all of the world were looking and longing for answers and hope. But through our message that faith moves, God did some powerful things. As Pastor Jen comes now to give you a biblical illustration of how these months were developed I want you to sit back and I want you to listen to how God took us through month by month. And I'll come back in a few minutes to wrap this up. Wow. Thank you, Pastor Rick, for the opportunity to share this really monumental last Sunday of a year, 2020. Here's how the Word of God enabled us to walk through one of the most difficult years in history. 2020, in victory and in faith. So what does faith move? That was the theme for the whole year. Every month, talking about something that faith would move you forward in, in your life. So in January and September, we learned that faith moves our prayers. And Matthew 17, 20, that Pastor Rick already read, our, our scripture for the whole year was our verse that if you say to that mountain, move from here to there, it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. In January, it prepared us to pray. In September, it propelled us to keep moving forward. And we declared that there's no obstacle too big. There's no mountain too high. There's no valley too low. That his purposes and plans cannot overcome. We would see faith move. In fact, in the nine-step process of prayer that I so enjoyed teaching you, start the prayer. This message is not just about what happened in ICF Rome in 2020. It's about what you can do today to let faith move your prayers. You start praying. You continue past the obstacles. You pray with believing people. Repeat as necessary. Never give up. And remember that victory is almost there. Victory will happen. It moves us from fear to freedom. From doubt to confidence, from sinking to soaring, and from the natural to the supernatural. And that's what I am thanking God for now and for the days ahead and as I look back. In February and October, we learned that faith moves our relationships and that it is a divine exchange. There's a relationship between you and God that is only between you and God. You have to make those decisions. And then there is a flow from the fruit of the Spirit, from me to you, from you to others. We declare that our relationship with Him will produce the fruit we need in every kind of relationship. And His character will see us through in those relationships what is that character? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 says, these fruits of the Spirit have been evident in so many of our lives, and God wants them to continue to abound and be evident now. The divine exchange brings His joy to flow through my life. His peace becomes my peace. His goodness becomes my goodness. Faith moves my relationships. 
Let your faith in God and the fruit of the Spirit move the relationships in your life. And today I want you to know, no matter whether you're watching with a family or alone by yourself, you are not alone because the Father, Abba, is with you. And that faith, that divine exchange has put you right where you need to be today. In March and December, because this was the first year that we did six months of a theme and then repeated it. We've never done that before. We don't plan to do it in 2021. But the Lord spoke to us and said we were to repeat the theme after six months. Why? Because some of us were in the middle of all kinds of things in the first six months. And God brought a whole new perspective in the second six months. So in March and December, we learned that faith moves our destiny. Destiny. That's this month, December, destiny. You may have questioned your destiny this year. You might be questioning your destiny today. The way others seem to have such a say-so and so much control in what you did or what you do or where you go. But here's what scripture reminded us in 1 Corinthians 2, 5. So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Your destiny is not defined by the restrictions of COVID-19. My destiny is not determined by the pandemic around the world. My destiny is in the hands of the powerful God that I serve and that gives me hope for today, thankfulness for yesterday, and great anticipation for tomorrow. We started a lockdown in March and being online, but we saw that God was truly in control of each of our destinies. We would rest in the power of God when the wisdom of man was clearly at a loss of what to do. Now we're Maybe beginning to see some new things happening, but here we are, December 27th, and next week, January 3rd, we have to be online because we can't be on campus in Rome, Italy. But we are not socially distanced from the presence of the Holy Spirit, from the power of God to move our destiny. And so in April and July, when I look back and I think about faith moving our decisions, the Lord has been reminding us all year. Decide today, decide every day to let faith move every decision in your life. The scripture said in Proverbs 3, 6, let love and faithfulness, 3, 3 through 6, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. That's the decisions. Yes, man is a part of my decisions, but I want that favor of God to rest upon me. And here's what it says in Proverbs 3, 3 in the message. Listen, this is God talking to you today. Listen for God's message, for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Make sure you choose well in these last few days of 2020. Make sure you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit when he prompts you, don't go there, don't go here, pause, listen to me, spend time in my presence. We were made to move mountains so we can trust God with every decision regarding the very big mountains in our lives. And though in isolation we are not alone, his presence is with us and his voice will speak and our faith will move our daily decisions. You have to decide to get out of bed. You have to decide to get up and clothe yourselves with the garment of praise. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and lift off those chains and decide today that I am going to trust God. And maybe you have been weary. Maybe you have been uncertain, but as we end this year, I want you to look back and say, you know what? I'm here. I'm alive. I'm watching this sermon, and God has some new decisions ahead for me that are going to lead me to great victories. We saw in May and November amazing financial and economic miracles in the midst of a pandemic. Like Pastor Rick said, faith moves our giving. 
We saw unprecedented financial miracles unfolding in people's lives as they trusted God and let faith abound. I loved our Wednesday night hour of power as people would write in, I lost my job, I don't know where I'm going to get my money from. And then they would write back a week Sometimes not even a week later, raises were given, new promotions were given, new contracts were given, jobs were given, housing was provided, new cars were provided. God has done amazing things because Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. And Philippians 4, 17 and 19 says, not because I desire a gift, but I desire that fruit may abound to your account. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We declared this year our seed would meet our need, that we would receive and release and be generous with God. I'm thankful for the generosity of people who enabled us to keep our food pantry distribution going and to be able to bless families twice in the month of December and to give presents at Christmas to the children and the young adults and the teenagers because faith moves our giving. And we learned here I learned in my life, you don't stop living because of social distancing or a mask or so much hand washing that I needed lots of hand lotion. You lift those hands to the Lord. In fact, I'm going to invite you to do it right now for just a minute. Would you just lift your hands to the Lord and say, God, thank you that I have life to give. I have a word of encouragement to give. I have talents to give. And if you have resources, you thank God I have resources. And God is equipping you. Some of you have received resources this year. And I believe in 2020, God is going to bless you and you're going to give back. You are going to receive and release in Jesus' name. In June and August, in the summer months, we declared that faith would move our health. Can you imagine that in 2019, we had two months set aside to talk about health, not knowing that there would be such a critical health issue in the world? For some, Pastor Rick has mentioned those who have lost, it was a transition to a heavenly body, with no more sickness or pain. For others, it has been a journey of trusting God to bring healing every day. Maybe right now you're trusting God for that healing. Well, here's what James 5, 15, and 16 reminded us. The prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well, and the Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We declared that spiritual health affects us all. Spiritual health promotes our human capacity. These were found in studies that were done throughout the world. Spiritual health means someone has a purposeful life. Spiritual health reveals a balance between internal and external and eternal possibilities. With God, all things are possible. I want to say that again. Spiritual health, the reason why we're online, we're not taking a break. The reason why we're declaring that faith moves our faith in God is that spiritual health will get you through whatever you are going through. Spiritual health will reveal a balance between internal, external, and eternal possibilities. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 tells us, Surely he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. His chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. I can raise my arm because God has been in the process of healing my shoulder. There is no disease 
that God cannot heal. There is no trauma that God cannot comfort. There is no turmoil that God cannot overcome with supernatural peace. That's for you today. There is no person too far from his reach or his hand to be extended into your situation. And there is no situation too difficult for God to solve with you. By his stripes, we are healed physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. Jesus came to give us access to the faith we need in our lives. You have access to this spiritual health. Activate it. Activate it. You know how you activate it? Say the name Jesus. Jesus. I am activating my faith in God by the name of Jesus. Faith has helped us face the mountains. Faith has helped us climb the rocky places. Faith has made us stronger than we thought, braver than we imagined. Faith has helped us persevere as we watch mountains fall. Faith has helped us to move past obstacles and into new opportunities to watch God's love and mercy and miraculous power unfold in each of our lives. I am so thankful that in 2020, I am standing in Rome, Italy, and last Sunday, I watched children and families and young adults celebrate the Christ of Christmas. And today, I encourage you to let faith in God move the mountains, thank him for what he's already done, and determine that 2021, you will see victory. Wow. What a year we've had. Maybe you say, well, I didn't hear all those messages. We have the ability online for you to go back and, and listen to every single one of them. She gave you the theme verse of each month. She gave you the content of each of the messages in, in general terms. But I can tell you, there are testimonies from people from around the world of God, God speaking through those messages. See, God has a word for you. You hear me they say that all the time. And if God has a word for you, it's just like this month. Faith moves our destinies. Our destinies are in God's hand. So as we're on the verge of stepping into a brand new year, 2021. I would have never have dreamed I'd still be around on the planet in 2021. You say, Pastor, you're not that old. Well, I'm telling you, I would have never dreamed we would have had 2021. I know that since our faith has sustained us through 2020, there is no doubt that God and all the power of heaven will be marching us into a year filled with miracle after miracle. I'm ready to see the supernatural power of God unleashed on the earth. We've seen devastation. We've seen all kinds of terrible things happen in 2020. It is time. And I'm telling you, this is going to be our greatest year. You see, Jennifer and I was given the theme for 2021 in August and September as we developed and wrote it of 2020 now. Just four months ago, we wrote this theme for 2021. And I'm telling you, friend, when you hear this, as we launch it next, next week, you'll get to hear. You're going to say, wow, God is speaking through those people, those pastors, to speak to the world. God has given us a theme that will launch us out of the COVID <laughs> pandemic, where I believe God was developing your faith. Your stamina, your ability to get up and fight, 
And I'm telling you, we're going to see some victories. We're going to see some miracles that we've been praying about for years. And all of a sudden, the prodigal will be coming home. All of a sudden, the marriage will be back together. All of a sudden, the sickness that the doctor said there is no cure for is going to happen. We're going to see the handiwork of God performed in our lives. See, I believe that something amazing is about to happen. And we must anticipate in our lives, and I'm looking forward to it, that the greatest year I've ever lived on the planet will be in 2021. See, because I can remember the verse that we gave you this year. Nothing will be impossible for you. As you ponder those last few words, Maybe you've gone through this year and you say, wow, pastor, you don't know how bad it's been. All I can tell you is, my friend, you're at the end of the year. You've made it through. You may have struggled. You may have taken five steps backwards. I don't know. But this one thing I know, as you're listening to me today, you can lift your head up. The enemy is defeated. And your victory is just in front of you. And I can tell you that if you've gone backwards in your relationship with God through this terrible year that we've had, God is about to change your life. God's about to affect your destiny. But you've got to commit to God. Those of you that have listened to us all this year and you say, wow, I've gotten stronger. I've gotten more desire to serve. I've gotten more involved. God bless you. But I'm still here to de declare to you today, your greatest day for souls is going to be in front of you. What I said a few moments ago about people's lives being changed and prodigals coming home and miracles of healing, I believe it's going to come to pass. And I believe that I've said so many times, we're one prayer away from a miracle. So as we conclude this year, I want the privilege of praying with you. Maybe you've listened to this message and this is the first time you've ever seen me. You say, man, I've never heard something like that before. Hear this. God loves you and has a plan for your life. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved. And God can change your life. Will you let him today? Will you say this prayer with me? God will change your life. And then I'm also going to pray that a miracle happens for you today. Maybe others of you, things are going good with you and God, but you need a miracle. My prayer is going to be for a miracle for your life. God bless you. Thank you for listening to us today. Thank you so much for listening today. As you have heard this message, I believe God has spoken to your life. Today, the best decision you can make is to follow Christ to say yes to him. And if you want to say that prayer with me, I'd love to pray with you right now. So I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Say it, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. From this day forward, for the rest of my life, I will live for you. The things I was doing that were sin, I won't do anymore because you've just changed my life. And I thank you, Lord, for answering this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you just said that prayer, that's the best prayer you've ever prayed. And I can tell you that God's got great plans for your life. In a moment, there'll be some information that you'll see online that you can follow up because we're, the relationship doesn't stop now. We've started a relationship where we're gonna help you on this journey with Christ. Maybe you've listened to this prayer today and now you're saying, man, I got another need. Or maybe, You've already given your life to Christ and you say, I need a miracle. Well, this pastor, this church believes in miracle. And so I want to pray a prayer for you right now that God will do a miracle for you. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for my friends that have listened today. God, there's nothing too big for you. You said we can ask anything according to your will and you hear us. And Lord, when you hear us, you respond to us. 
And Lord, right now, there are people that are praying prayers all over the world, and they're asking you for a miracle. So God, no matter what it is, I pray right now, you will touch them, you will answer their prayer, and a miracle will happen for them as we pray this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said that prayer, I can tell you, I can't wait to hear the results of that prayer. So if you just send us a note, the information will be there right after you see this video, and you can say, I wanna send that guy a note to tell him what God has done for my life. We love you. And remember, God's got a plan for your life.